Now, here at Top Oz Tours, we generally stick pretty close to home, but every now and then it's fun to head further afield. And this episode of our travel series is a cracker. Welcome to Vietnam, where big city life, intricate culture, a rich history, fabulous food and exquisite natural beauty collide to deliver a travel experience like no other. I'm Adam Ford, and in this video, we bring you 10 great things to do in Vietnam on a first visit. We'll learn about the Vietnam War at the Reunification Palace in Ho Chi Minh City. Go below in the infamous Coochie Tunnels. Learn to cook up a Vietnamese storm in gorgeous Hoi An. Take on the hair-raising traffic in Huey. Explore Hanoi's fascinating old quarter. And soak up the sublime vistas on Ha Long Bay. All that and more is coming up. But before we meet our local guide and get underway, take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing travel ideas. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. How exciting to be in Vietnam. It's amazing Vietnam. All the team members see the history, the beauty of the country, the people, and especially the food. So we are going to visit Vietnam's biggest city. Tell me a little bit about Saigon. How many people live there? For the new investigation in Saigon, we got more than 10 million people living. And Saigon is one of the biggest city right now and is well known during the Vietnam War. And now we renamed Saigon into Ho Chi Minh City, you know, to pay respect to Ho Chi Minh in the north of Vietnam. The highlight in Ho Chi Minh City is um, we got a chance to see the reunification palace and the war museums. The war museum, that's the area where we display all the things that happened during the Vietnam War. Terrible weapon, the ills at that time during the Vietnam War, especially like Nepal bomb and Asian Orange. For us, we only hope we never have a war anymore. We all hope, you know, that we got a long peaceful time in Vietnam, you know, for Vietnamese people to rebuild the country and improve the standard of the living. The Vietnam War, also known locally as the American War, began in the mid-1950s and ended with the fall of Saigon to the Communist North in 1975. The War Remnants Museum documents the devastating toll this conflict took on both sides. It's a sobering must-see. Across town, the Reunification Palace is the former home and workplace of the President of South Vietnam and the scene of the Vietnam War's final dramatic moments. The Reunification Palace is a unique opportunity to literally step back in time to the 30th of April 1975 when the first of the communist tanks rolled through the gates, signalling the end of the American War. This is just a spine-tingling piece of history to experience. It feels like someone locked the doors of the presidential palace that day in 1975 and reopened them half a century later. The interiors are largely undisturbed and visitors can tour the staterooms, presidential office and network of fortified tunnels beneath the main building. Leave time to explore the grounds and reflect on the conflict that continues to resonate five decades later. From Ho Chi Minh City, we head northwest to visit the Kuchi Tunnels, which were utilised by North Vietnamese troops to withstand US aerial bombardment and launch stealth attacks. The tunnel about 250 kilometres, right? The first we built during French War 1948 in Tang Phu Trung Village for hiding, not for fighting, right? Very simple tunnel during French War. During American War, with the modern weapon B-52 bomb, 
it could destroy the first level. That's why they have to make deeper for hiding, for fighting. How deep did the tunnels go? Three levels. The first level, three meters deep. The second one, about six. The last one, from eight to ten. Wow. And there were kitchens and dining room, places to sleep? Yes, we have got nearly everything. The kitchen, dining room, hospital, meeting room under the ground. Or a meeting bunker or a sleeping room, fighting bunker under the ground. <laughs> How long would a Viet Cong soldier spend underground before coming up? Uh, not a long time, about a week or ten days. Because inside we have got need everything. A resting room, a bunker, everything for them. Sometimes, American soldiers came, they stay in here. Someday, they couldn't find anything. After that, American soldiers left, we went out. You come out of the yes. tunnels and you leave? Yes. Okay, yeah. all right. So, we're going to take a look inside one of the tunnels. Will you show us? Yes. Well, let's go and have a look. Let's go look the tunnel, yes. Okay. Yes. It soon becomes clear just how effective the tunnels would have been for evading detection. And I decide to see for myself what life was like underground. Wow, this is unbelievable. At the height of the Vietnam War, these tunnels would have stretched for about 250 kilometers and they would have been a lot smaller than this. These tunnels are actually double the size to accommodate the tourists. So you imagine the tunnels like this. It's incredibly hot. Yeah, no, I don't think I could have... Wow, you can hear the AK-47s going off in the background. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Situated just south of Ho Chi Minh City, the Mekong Delta, also known affectionately as the Rice Bowl of Vietnam, is well worth visiting on a day tour to get an insight into rural Vietnamese life. Here, the mighty Mekong River empties into the South China Sea. This fertile region is home to 20 million people. Toy, how are you? I'm fine. How about you, Adam? I'm very, very well, thank you. Very yeah. excited to be here in the Mekong Delta. Really? Yeah. I'm happy to hear that. Very exciting too today. First of all, I think that we, we go inside the village, yeah, see how the people they live around here, and we start one family. Yeah, we enjoy some fruit with them, enjoy some Mekong music, and after that, we enjoy some honey tea on the bee farm and some coconut lolly. Yeah. But the highlight of the tour will be taking the, on a small champagne, about 20 minutes on a small canal. Yeah, beautiful, quiet. So a champagne is a little boat, isn't it? Yes. So before, we didn't have the bridge, so we used to use that, that boat for carrying the fruit. I believe we're stopping for a home-cooked lunch. Yeah, some shrimp, some elephant ear fish, some coconut salad. Very special for you. Yeah. Enjoy the Vietnamese food. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm very happy <laughs> today. Thank you very much. From Ho Chi Minh City, we fly north to Da Nang before driving the short distance south to stunning Hoi An. Lose yourself in this port town's UNESCO World Heritage listed centre, which is made up of historic homes, merchant stores, assembly halls and pagodas, most dating from the 1800s. The old Japanese covered bridge was built sometime in the early 17th century and is thought to have linked Chinese and Japanese communities on either side of the canal. As night falls, the entire town is transformed into a glittering kaleidoscope of coloured lanterns and night markets. It's truly breathtaking. 
There are plenty of great places to eat in Hoi An, alongside numerous cooking schools that will give you the skills to recreate your fave dishes back home. We're joining Miss Lu at Taste Vietnam for a cooking class at the Morning Glory restaurant. Now, any cooking class starts with ingredients, so it's off to the buzzing central market to do a spot of shopping. Back in the classroom, Miss Lu wastes no time in demonstrating how to whip up mouth-watering shrimp parcels in a tasty broth. She makes it look so easy, and while I'm all thumbs, I do manage to turn out some half-decent looking parcels. And as they say, the proof of the pudding, or parcel, is in the eating. Hoi An is also well known for its many tailors, and my holiday wardrobe could do with a spruce up. Now one of the best things about a visit to Vietnam is of course the tailoring, especially here in Hoi An. So we've got shirts, suits, dresses, evening wear, you name it. I'm here with the best in the business, Jane at Yali, and she is going to give me a whole new look. Can you give me this head of hair as well? I think you can. Really? Yeah. Fabulous. The Yali Couture showroom in the town centre hums all day long and the service is fast and efficient. The key to a good result is preparation. Have a clear idea of what you want made, pictures if possible, and bring a sample of fabric from home. You'll need to drop back into the showroom at least a couple of times for progress fittings. Here's a sneak peek at where the magic happens. My tailor, Mr Hoa, and his team get straight to work crafting my new threads. And while I didn't walk away with a new do, I certainly got the spruce up. From Hoi An, we head back up to Da Nang and continue north towards our next destination, the former imperial capital, Quay. Travelling through the Hai Van Pass, there's time for a stop at a hilltop fort used by South Vietnamese and US forces during the Vietnam War. The former capital of the Nguyen emperors is packed with heritage highlights, including the imposing citadel, which served to fortify the imperial city. I decide to brave Hue's relentless traffic on a city tour by Cyclo, and my driver does an awesome job of keeping us both out of harm's way. He drops me off at the gates to the Citadel for a late afternoon guided walking tour. And as the light fades, this incredible piece of history takes on an ethereal feel. 
Construction of the citadel, complete with a moat, began in the early 1800s. It surrounded the imperial buildings of state and the home of the royal family. The structures were badly damaged in the Vietnam War. But what remains has lost none of its power to impress. Departing Hue, we wing our way north to Vietnam's fascinating capital, Hanoi. Now, Hanoi is just fabulous. The weather is not so good, it has to be said, but there are plenty of undercover gems to uncover if you know where to look, like the amazing Café Foucault in the Old Quarter. Now, this French provincial capital is renowned for its coffee culture, and I'm here to soak it all in. The cafe scene in Hanoi is a remnant of French colonial rule and we'll circle back to Café Foucault a little later. Hanoi served as the capital of French Indochina for the first half of the 20th century and the evidence is everywhere. The architecture is striking and you'll find traditional French-style bakeries dotted across the city. Spend some time exploring Hanoi's bustling old quarter. This network of small streets is a maelstrom of sights, sounds and smells and a guided walking tour will ensure you get the most from your visit. Back at Café Foucault, we soak up the great views from the rooftop terrace across the Hone Kim Lake and magnificent Red Huck Bridge. Foucault is actually a private home that doubles as a café and is full of ageing relics and secret stairways. Hanoi is the original home of Vietnamese egg coffee. Sweetened with condensed milk, it's more a melding of coffee and dessert. Hanoi is also renowned for its water puppet theatre, which packs in the crowds. The art of water puppetry originated in the rice fields of northern Vietnam in the 11th century. Water puppet shows would originally have been performed in rice paddy deltas, but this modern incarnation has plenty of charm. Wow, now this is something I have dreamed of seeing for years. It's the incomparable Ha Long Bay. Over 3,000 limestone islands and rock formations. So sit back, relax and enjoy as we cruise through this incredible landscape. It sounds like a cliche, but no first visit to Vietnam would be complete without cruising between the towering limestone casts of Ha Long Bay. All manner of junk-style boats ferry guests out to this watery world of wonder, two hours' drive east of Hanoi. And whether it's a day trip from the city or an overnight stay on the bay, this will possibly be the biggest highlight of your holiday. For more ideas for amazing things to do in Vietnam, just visit our website.